Terahypt Part 1, The Beginning Chapter 10, Starlit Void Nothing can stem from something. Those who are weak have sadly passed away. Isn't that right, Tatra? A blurry marble slowly appeared. The edges of the marble became more and more defined. A large black dot could be seen in the middle, and around it a thin steel-blue ring spiraled out. It disappeared. Then a sharp pain in Tatra's left ear awoken her. She let out a scream in shock and fell off the couch she was sleeping in. She was met with a completely different room. Everything was muted and dark, with faint glowing lights, hugging the corners of the strange objects present in it. Beautiful! Isn't it? A dark and deep voice could be heard at the end of the long room. A figure sitting in a chair with her black, with her back turned away, could be seen. Tatra, confused and scared, quickly stood up and said with a trembling voice, who are you? Where's Tig and Serthilia? A loud shh came from the figure. A deafening silence enveloped the alien room. Only a deep droning could be heard creeping from the walls. The figure spoke. Both Tig and Serthilia are fine. They are alive and well. From that world of yours. Tatra had nothing to say. The figure was still sitting there silently. Only a slight rocking back and forwards was seen from them. How do you feel? Physically, not mentally, they said. Tatra was still scared, and she had nothing to reply. Hungry? Does something hurt? Toilet break? They shouted sternly. Tatra could only say, I'm scared. And immediately after, the figure stood up and walked up to her. They sat down right next to her. Now she could see their whole face. It was a human one. They had pale bright skin and black glistening hair all swept back. They had a very stoic expression with sharp eagle-like eyes. Her heart skipped a beat after how quick and yet gently they approached. They had the body of a man, not the overly curvy figures of both Tig and Sir Thilly had, but it had the same eerily perfect traits. Let me introduce myself. I go by the name C. I too am myself feeling scared by what is happening. C had a very calm composure. His clothes were all in black. 
and they were all clad in armor plates like that of an insect. Where are we? Tatra asked. You are inside my Zertzik. But I wouldn't really call it that because most of them are white and open. This one is black and closed, he said. Why am I here? Tatra continued. C closed his eyes and looked. He looked away. I am taking you away to a rather interesting place, he said with raised eyebrows and looked slightly bemused from what he just said. A long pause with nothing said followed. He then stood up and looked back at Tatra. Do you want to see my Sertzek? C said with a slight grin. Tatra pro politely agreed and gently stood up. She followed him to the back of the Sertzek. A strange wall could be seen. It slowly but then quickly snapped open like a gate. They both walked out at a steady pace with C right beside her. A completely black world with a sil silver horizon could be seen. And up at the night sky, spheres of light shined with gentle white flames enveloping them. They were like giant stars. Not a single color could be seen. It's all black and white. I love them. So gentle and abiding, C said with a placid smile. What are they? Tatra asked. They are my knowledge, following me wherever I go. You see, Tig and her father, Scythus, are all but silly simple beings. And from all this knowledge, I still don't know my origin. He walked away and stood before Tatra with his arms out, presenting his whole figure. I look like them, but every time I ask them why, I get painfully whipped. C didn't move a single muscle but his eyes slowly widened with a blank expression. Tatra stepped back. Why is it that everything I am allowed to know is the cries of pathetic, blithering idiots? He slowly walked towards Tatra, staring her down with his sharp, menacing stare. Are you really that interesting to me? Every time I complain, Scythus appears and slowly opens up my skin with that infuriating wall that is his stare! Tatra got shaken to her core from C's grindingly sharp voice. She slowly kneeled down and stared up with tears welling up in her eyes. C slowly tilted his head. What is this you are doing? It's like staring into a mirror. He very calmly said, well, darting his eyes all over Tatra. I, I do not know, she said. 
An extremely long pause followed. C just kept staring with his arms still out. Tatra started to cry, but no response from C. He slowly moved his arms down. Then, out from a burst of anger, he grabbed her by the shirt and threw her back into his sertsek. Chapter 11 The Why I like the void, but why? Should there not be something? I am as good as dead, but my eyes are open. I see you. Do not hurt me anymore. Tig was greeted with a pair of nice gentlemen. They came from the front gates of her main quarters. They were introducing her to their plentiful of intricate inventions that they filled their search six with. Tig was oh, only responded with a tired smile. Resting her face in her in the palm of her hand. That is very beautiful, she said. Another gentleman on a small sertsek floated in. He had a large fan behind it that kept knocking over Tig's precious pottery. She sighed harder. She stood up from her throne and walked out to the balcony to the left. Hiria was growing larger into her ideal Hiptian world, but she could not help but to think back to the moment she first met Tatra on that beautiful beach. Tig looked out on the white shimmering rooftops and the spacious courtyards beneath. A large civilization of Hyptians was soon growing into becoming her new perfect world. She enjoys the laughter of the bustling Hyptians going about their day but she suddenly felt the need to drink water. She blasted down to the sea and drank gallons of it like a complete fool. She threw it all up. Water is healthy for the body, she thought to herself, but the water was dirty. Somehow, before she tried again, she heard a loud snap in the skies. A dark object rapidly flew down. Tig did not know what it was. It appeared closer, and then it stood on its end besides the beach. It rapidly came close, and out came a woman she knew. But before Tig could say anything, a shadowy, a shadowy figure appeared behind her. You gave her to me. But why is... Silence. The sudden experience of it all made Tig question her choices. Tig did not do anything wrong. What is this dark figure? she asked herself. A sudden thought in her head appeared. Why did her father hug her closer than her mother? But Tig does not have a mother. Is Scythus the only father? The woman from the dark object ran to her. It was Tatra. Let those big, beautiful legs shine, a stern voice said. It was C. 
he came towards Tig with a very domineering presence. Tig was shocked. She has not seen this man before. Are you a mother? No, no, no. Are you a mother or just a stupid child prancing around on these planets? C said. Who does this gentleman think he is? How does he know Tig? Tatra was looking back and forth at the both of them. Tig stood up. Who in this beautiful world are you? Where do you come from? Tig said. I am C. Scythus sent me. No. I sent myself, he said. <laughs>